Oh, hello, Blartanian here, bringing you another attempt at the terrible mechanical tentacles, uh, Yishtola Heretic Slufania. Bring Ultimacy and Hope, along with Aerith, for a really synergistic team that works pretty well together. So the name of the game here is going to be enabling Ultimacia to do as much damage as possible without draining her too dry early on. We're going to be really trying to stretch her skills and get as much value out of them as possible whenever we use them. She, uh, I'm not going to say she's outdated at this point, but her, ki her kit's a little bit... It's been around for a while and has uh, some issues with longevity, let's say that. So an issue you're going to be seeing throughout this fight is... Uh, Managing Aerith's debuff. I, uh, I actually <laughs> I find myself struggling with it pretty consistently because what I keep doing is putting myself in a position where I want to refresh the buff on on A, but I want to hit B so it so as not to mess up the uh, the break order. So a tip I can give you is if it seems arbitrary which of the two of them you hit, don't do what I do here and hit the one with the more hit points just because they have more hit points. Hit the one that you hit the one that you would not want to hit if you were trying to break one of them. So that way, when Aerith's turn next comes up, she'll be able to break the one you want to break and refresh their debuff without, you know, getting all awkward. Related to that, uh, with Ultimecia, you want to try to use her single target attack on the one that has the debuff if you have been a baddie and only applied it to one guy. In this case, there it was on both of them, but later you'll see instances where it's only on one of them because of mismanagement, and you'll want to hit the hit that one with the single target attack for that bonus hit point damage. So you see here, I had to hit B to break him, and as a result, A's debuff fell off. So that's uh, just something to keep in mind when playing air. That that debuff duration is really short. It's a really great move, but it's really not very long. You'll also notice that I'm using quite a few HP pluses with Ultimecia. Uh, basically, in order to maximize her... Um, actually, before I get to that, well, tie, I want to save her skills as much as possible. I could use a Hell ju Judgment here and use that to break these guys, but I uh, I want to save those from really high damage situations. Basically, by the end of the fight, I want to be able to just drop Hell's Judgment after Hell's Judgment. So this early in the fight, when she's capping on most of the things anyway, I just dropped a, a Maelstrom and then used Hope to break them. Maybe that's going a little too conservative, but I don't want to get to turn you know, 70, 75 and find myself running out of skills. The nice thing about this team is it's defensive enough that it can survive playing that safe game. I don't have to worry about these guys suddenly randomly killing us. Another thing with Ultimisa's rotation to keep in mind is her HP plus doesn't increase her EX charge when she's on her free EX turns, when she has the Griever Magic icon above her head. So basically always use a skill when uh, when that icon's up in order to get some EX charge. There we go, we've, uh, we've pushed them below the 80% threshold. This is when they, they get ready to murder us. You can see here uh, another kind of conservative hit with, with the, even though her buffs are starting to run out, I don't really care at this point because I don't want to be wasting you know, skills that could be hitting really hard with imperil damage when I could just throw an HP plus just to kind of keep things going. So long as she doesn't lose her, her stack buff, I don't. I don't mind stalling a couple turns with HP plus just to bridge, the, get kind of bridge this uh, this awkward part. Oh no, Aerith's last stand, and that is uh, the value of Cater Call, which uh, is a seventy percent evasion chance, which was enough in this case to dodge the bullet that is that knife. That made no sense. Um, so. Next up, we want to have Hope use his LD before Ultimecia's turn, which is not going to be a problem, so that she can kind of continue kicking butt. Aerith is going to use Seal Evil here, and uh, I'm being smart and hitting A instead of B, as mentioned. That's what I was saying earlier. I'm 
Don't worry, I'll, I'll keep making that mistake throughout the fight, but if there's something you take away from this, it's keep in mind which of them you're putting that debuff on when you are be mindful of uh, that when it comes to break order. Or, I guess, be mindful of break order when it comes to that. Okay, little launch there. So, something I probably could have done more of, reviewing it, is uh, that little, you know, using hope skills into to charge his EX, I really didn't do that too many times this fight. And given how many skills he has by the end of the fight, I really, I probably could have been a bit more aggressive with that. Um, I don't play too... I don't use Hope that often, uh, although after this I might start doing it more frequently because he's, he's a lot of fun to play, especially with a really good magic damage dealer like Ultimecia. Look at that, still hitting, still hitting the big numbers. You love seeing max damage even after they drop below certain thresholds. So the only real danger this team faces uh, is going to be that orb. Um, in this case, I think I, I can get away with hitting to reapply the debuff. I could have broken B there, but again, I wanted to keep the debuffs on them to maximize Ultimacia's damage. And this is another instance where, had I been more thoughtful about it, I could have had the debuff on A and hit B there and gotten an extra turn out of it. Now see, the, uh, the orb is getting a bit low there. Yeah, it's a pretty simple character to play, but that uh, the debuff micromanagement and also that's the debuff micromanagement is probably the most important thing about playing her. And the second most important thing is not getting complacent and going on autopilot and letting her uh, her L debuff fall off her while everything else is getting refreshed. I uh, that may happen later this fight. Hopefully, it'll be an educational experience for you. She's putting out pretty pretty decent damage for support there, right? I mean, the imperil helps. You can see the the difference. If it, had I been able to keep the debuff on both of them, uh, the damage would be well, just it, not so much more that it would have decided the run in a different way. But that those kinds of optimizations can really help, especially if you're trying to stretch your roster and bring you know bring your favorites or bring older units to the content. Always a good opportunity, good to uh, you know, le learn and get better at the game, right? Another, ni another nice thing about Hope in this stage is that he uh, he gives that buffer of hit points so that these attacks don't put you in danger. So as you might have noticed, the uh, I've already I, I let her seal evil buff fall off. That wasn't intentional. I, I just kind of lost track of it, but. That gives me a good excuse to go ahead and refresh that orb a little earlier than usual. Since otherwise, using her skill 1 in the stage is kind of just a waste of a of an LD turn. Now, working a little bit low on Hope's LD. The, uh, the D-Shell debuff, I think it's about to fall off both of them. Which is a pity, because that's really... That's been helping our damage tremendously. They're close enough that I'm not going to reapply it, although in hindsight I probably could have gotten away with it. I know they would have cleansed it very soon, but um, yeah, I end up using the last charge so late in the fight that I don't think it would have mattered. So here's a, a small Hail, Hail Mary that doesn't pay off, wasting a launch uh, and failing to bring them below 49%. So 
So instead, I, I get lucky with that miss because it lets me do this. I know this isn't the first team to use the, the double evasion call ability strategy to survive these guys, but uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty handy trick. So once again, we don't want to waste Ultimecia skills when they're not imperiled and taking maximum damage, so we're going to just kind of play it cool with some HP attacks there. So in Aerith's case, because she's she, we're just kind of stalling out before we do her next steel evil, I don't mind spending a turn refreshing the orb for some safety. It actually jumps her ahead of them again, which ends up being a blessing in disguise. Um, Hope, happily still doing good damage. Um, because uh, another buff of hers that almost fell off here was her Prayer of the Cetra buff, so this gives me another opportunity to refresh her buffs without having to waste turns of her of her LD buff. Um, I wish I could take credit and say that was the plan all along, but I just really got lucky. Now we could EX here, but we're not going to. Once again, we really want Hope's Imperil and Aerith's uh, Seal Evil on them before we start going to town with Ultimecia. If we're going to be using any of her skill buttons, we want to make sure we're getting maximum value from it. That's how you make her work. And she does work really well if you keep those things in mind. There we go. So here's the thing, I was focused earlier on hitting the single target attack with uh, it use, aiming that at the where the one that has Aerith's debuff on it, that ended up costing me the break order there because I forgot that her skill 1 hits the person you target with it, unlike say Kuja's skill 1 who which hits like whoever you target last, so that goofed me up a bit, um, something to keep in mind going forward. but. So here's uh, here's another decision, uh, refreshing the buff, the debuff on him instead of applying it on the other guy. Now, um, sloppy plays notwithstanding, it's time to close this out. So we're bringing an emperor, using his burst, and that burst effect is uh, is real good on Ultimecia because if there's one thing she loves, it's uh, it's bravery gen or bravery fun, basically anything that gives her more free brave. And so with that in mind, I'm going to give her some more brief regen there. I'm going to bring out the lightning call. The reason for that is I was going to do Camelot, keeping with the brave regen theme, but uh, I don't want to take up debuff space that could be used for Emperor Traps. So instead, we're going to use lightning call to get some first some damage and some imperil, uh, and then to just give some bonus brave regen, as you can, you can see. Um, it's going to be perfectly fine. She's going to do a great deal of damage here. The classic ulti burst rotation of skill 2, LD, EX, skill 2, skill 2, and then burst. That's how you get the maximum amount of uh, AoE damage from her health judgment. It probably plays differently if you are facing single target, but you don't want to do that if you're using Ultimacy anyway. So kind of a moot point to say anything. Oh man, I love this enemy. <laughs> a little bit of fun with editing there. Now it's time to go into overdrive and really take these guys, uh, take these guys down. Eyeballing the orb nervously there, because again, we, this team has a lot of great defensive properties, so the, the one problem would have been running out of or due to, you know, again, mismanagement, not paying attention. Um, or, I guess, running out of ulti skills would have also been a problem. So, <laughs> we're going to not EX here. Because that would have been the one thing that really could have cost us the run. It's just kind of blindly hit, mashing that EX button with one, one turn left. Yeah. And here on out, it's just ride the damage train. Uh, they both have 
uh, hope and erethy buffs on them. They, uh, you know, they're both pretty low, the orb is not a problem, so it's just about, you know, using what resources we have to close things out. And that means bringing in Ramu. Uh, speaking of debuff space, I guess I probably didn't need to let them, um, I, I, I could have used Ember EX in order to get that additional defense down, but I don't think the 10% was going to make a huge difference. And the paralysis is going to give us a, a little buffer at the end, as you're going to see. So again, um, making the most of her skills when the damage windows are greatest. So here, you know, you get the bonus HP damage cap in the summon. That's fantastic time to go, you know, go totally balls, <laughs> balls out with, uh, with Ultimacia. Checking the seal evil buff. I think it has one turn left on it. So needless to say, Ultimis is really enjoying that Emperor burst, because she gets to take a zillion turns around him and get a bunch of bravery on off the burst effect. These two play really well together. Uh, all the more so tagging out Hope, who had already dropped his imperil. Really, this is the reason that I had kind of pussyfooted around with the HP attacks earlier in the fight, was knowing once we got to this point, this is going to bring her damage above anything she could hope to achieve otherwise, so. Yeah. Bring up the seal evil again. Probably going to have to do one more Aerith skill one to close the fight out, just to make sure the orb doesn't mess with us. But between the delays and the deletion and the paralysis, I don't think they're going to get another turn. Got a nice chunky launch there too, we love to see it. And you can see we're starting to run pretty low on Ultimacia skills. So, we're going to use our last Protean Swords because, again, charging the X only works with the uh, with the icon above her, if you use a skill, now we're just going to throw out some HP attacks because we want to be able to use that free last help's judgment if we can recharge her X one more time. It's entirely possible they'll die before we get to that point, but I'd rather not have to just EX and then have no skill to use after it. Speaking of, uh, get closing things out. Okay. So we can go ahead and HP attack there, and as you can, you're about to see, uh, all that caution maybe wasn't necessary because we ended the fight with a single Hell's Judgment left over, and uh, so Hope here is about to kill one of them. Um, had to pause for a second to uh, fix the recording. The phone cut off, and I had to start the recording manually again. Luckily, we didn't lose any turns this time. A fun fact, if they're paralyzed when one dies, the other doesn't de doesn't cleanse and enrage. Um, obviously, in this case, it wouldn't have made a difference, but cool little bit of tech you learn at the very end there. Anyway, this is a super fun fight. Well, no, it's a super fun team. The fight sucks, but I love the team. Uh, it works really well together. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something. Uh, consider liking the video if you want to spread it around, or subscribing if you want more content. Um, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you around. Thanks!